welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. What do you reckon? I'm slightly worried that the uh, that the clapperboard operator doesn't have a clapperboard. Can we just a woman we... just literally led forward and went? We might get a, just show us how you do that. That's just... quite a. There you go. Yeah. You see, I wasn't sure this was an interview show or whether it was like a kids TV show and she was going to do a crocodile song. <laughs> she was just going to come in, the crocodile snaps in Ross's face. And if any wasps come onto the set... <laughs> Is that what it was? There's just flies <laughs> circulating me and she just... Yeah, but no, it was nice. I like it. Now, look, Sorry, I'll stop commenting no, on don't. the... No, uh... This is what the show is. And there's a hotel, though. It's nice. It's, it's very, beautiful. Very fancy hotel. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm slightly worried that prostitutes are just going to slowly move in and sit at the back. There. And housekeeping may come yeah. in and ask yeah. if we want to turn down service. I can't actually stand up because I've stolen so many of the <laughs> miniature soaps. As usual. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, everyone yes. I've told that I'm doing this show with you, every Australian wants to know, has he gone off us? Has the uh, bushfire business turned him off us? Absolutely not. No. I, absolutely no. Mm. I'm still a massive fan of Australia mm. and... I will be back. But I just decided that, um, yeah, I just decided I thought I'd just live somewhere that doesn't burst into flames. <laughs> just for a little bit. Mm. That was the, mm. yeah. Because I nearly, because we, we were trying to decide what to do. House burnt down, we're sort of going, you know, we didn't really want to live in the same same area just because it's that, that, you know, there's things always there. And for a, for a little bit, we thought, well, why don't we move, why don't we move, like, you know, somewhere that's not as fire prone. And there was talk of, I went, well, should we move to Queensland? And it's quite lucky, <laughs> yeah. And that could have been yeah. the worst. <laughs> could right. you imagine? Just went, hey, let's let's just move up there. What could possibly? Because oh, I remember you 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 <laughs> said to me that I should come out uh, yeah. to your house and see. You told me you had a dungeon. I do, I do, yeah, my, a my DVD my, dungeon. A DVD dungeon. <laughs> but it was yeah. shockers with you said comedy rarities yeah. and things. And, Are and... you trying to make me cry? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but the thing is, when I say? heard this, this yeah. is terrible. This is how my mind works. When someone said, oh, Ross's house has burned down, I went, the DVDs? Yeah. And then someone said, and the animals. Yeah, the animals, <laughs> obviously, yeah, yeah, the yeah. animals. Yeah, that's, that, it, it does show you how yeah, people's minds work. <laughs> now, what I'd done is I, I had a... Um, uh, it was a wine cellar. Right. And uh, I don't drink, so I ripped all the wine shelves out mm. and uh, all along that you descended the stairs and there was, wow. a, like, a curved door and there was, like, a like a little hunchback on the door. And, I, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the joy was to go down first and then watch people's faces as they came round the corner and just saw these thousands and thousands of... Of uh, what turns out were uninsured DVDs. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, just racks and racks and racks. Of the, and then, uh, and then I had a uh, what else did I have? All them um, uh, comedy like vinyl, loads of oh, um, no. loads what of rare. Uh, what went? Uh, well, what didn't go? I had every mint condition, every single Jonathan Winters albums oh. uh, that he'd ever made. I had uh, uh, Billy Connolly. All of the Billy Connolly stuff, right. that, uh, including right. like some of the ones that were out and then never got re-released and stuff. So I had all of that. And, oh yeah, my god, all so. just melted. Well, not even melted, just gone. It was like a nuclear bomb had hit it. There was no, you know, there was there was bits of ash, powdered ash that you'd go, mm. that's whiter. So that must have been where all my books were. But there wasn't. There wasn't stuff. And the animals? What? Oh, <laughs> Someone told me all the animals jumped into a dam. Yeah, yeah. And did the, they survive? The, the, yeah, I had uh, Highland cows, and uh, they had, they were all they were perfectly clean, and their noses were burned and the ends of their horns where they got in the dam and stuck their heads out and yeah, so that was yeah. But there's there's um, uh, people we know who who were in there who were in their dam while the fire was going on. All the you know there was animals jumping because all the animals went for the you know went for the dams and so so yeah it was um yeah it was um it hasn't it hasn't put me off Austra i don't hold it against the no. australian you know but we might we might be back and how do i pronounce the town that you're from are you a geordie yes. is that what you are yeah but is, is that people from newcastle people from newcastle or geordies but right. i'm from a, a town called cramlington right which is a sort of i'm trying to think what the equivalent would be well, you know, like on the um, oh, what are the is it Delphin Homes? Is that the uh, <laughs> what is it? Where they, you know, when they build those those houses next to 
parks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mainly, it's like right. marshland, you know. Right. <laughs> it's Good that stuff. sort of stuff. You know when they build those? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a, what was fields. And right. They just build all these, built all these houses and went, poof, that's the, that's the town, you know. And what so, was that like? What was growing up there like? Very, very, just bland, just as bland as bland could be. Not dangerous, very safe, just houses. But the weird thing about where I grew up was all the houses, because they were all built off the same plan. At least in Australia, like, you've figured out the idea that if you're going to build a new estate, build, like, a, a four-bedroom house and then maybe it's a three-bedroom yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and sort of at least put them at a right angle or something, right. you know, to fit them together. Um, the street that I lived on, it was exactly the same house, replicated all the way down. So you could go to your friend's house, you could go to the next-door neighbour's house and see what your house looked like if your parents had slightly better taste. <laughs> right. Or worse taste, depending on... Yeah. And much comedy yeah. was, like, when did the... When did the collection of vinyl albums begin? My my gran used to have loads of uh, Jasper Carrot and Billy Connolly yeah, and right. Max. Do you remember Max Boyce? No, I don't he was, know. If he, was got a, him. he was a sort of a Welsh rugby comic. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He, his, I just used to put these. I, you know, take the Beatrix Potter off <laughs> right. and put Max Boyce on, and it was all bawdy rugby tales and sort of. <laughs> of course. Yeah, and then the Billy Connolly stuff, and it was all, you know, right. just just him. Effing and Jeffing on the, you know, <laughs> but but it just sounded funny and the laughter and all that. So I kind of and then slowly over over time I started to understand more and more of it. So that's where it started. But yeah. what? Yeah, where does your style come from? Because you can do a three-hour show like like Billy Connolly, but it's not the same content. When I first started, it was. Um, I just know jokes, really. <laughs> That's where it comes from. <laughs> right. It's basically like when I first started, I used to try and, you know, I'd try and do what I thought a comic did, which was just come out and do set things, and I just got bored of it, and it just didn't right. kind of fit right. Um, and what was the breakthrough? Well, because I started in Newcastle, and, the, and London was the place where... You know, London, everyone does five minutes, ten minutes, and then they're 20 minutes, and they build up to yeah. it, and it's, you know... Some people would spend years just going around doing the five-minute slots. Well, up in Newcastle, there wasn't any clubs, so you could turn up and you'd, turn, you'd go to a pub and say, we want to put on a show. You know, there was only about five acts, so right. you had to keep reusing the same people, so you had to, there had to be a turnover. And I used to host, and because it was the same crowd each week, I just, just talk to the audience. I just think, oh, what's funny? Go on and just, you know, just just be funny rather than write a load of jokes and, and then go up, because that, that took too long. And then when I came to London, I got I did loads of warm-ups, TV, right. which people don't like you talking about, you know? They don't like right. the idea of, you know, there's a, you know, before no, the show someone starts, else. somebody comes out and goes, could you laugh at... <laughs> this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's a specific so, sort of skill, isn't it? Very, yeah, because you can't be... If you're too good, you get... The, if you're rubbish, <laughs> yeah. you get the sack. <laughs> yes. Because they want the audience up. But the worst crime you can... And it happened to me a couple of times and, you know, somebody had a quiet oh, word. Somebody could, if you If you go, right, we're going to go back to the show and the audience goes... No. <laughs> not the it's, show. No, not the show again. <laughs> That's so... So I did that and, and, and those were literally... Three, you know, sometimes four-hour recordings and of, of, you know, like sitcoms and stuff where they do this, they do the uh, scene. Somebody had fluffed their lines, and they'd have to start again. Right. So you were literally you were on and off and on and off, and you just come on, chat away, and then. So if you tried to do a gag, if you tried to do a gag or a, something that was, you know, that had any kind of length to it, as soon as you got into it, you just got on a roll, and they'd go, all right, uh, and start again. Or you, you know, or you, or, or a light would blow, and you would, you know, they'd be changing the light. So you're trying to make people laugh, right, right. but at the same time, you got two blokes on a step ladder with a big hook trying to, <laughs> yeah. you know. So it was kind of the, the audience are kind of doing this all the time. So I started to, I'd start, I'd like comment on that. So it, it started to become, rather than me going, this is what I'm going to talk about, and you will listen to it. I kind of go. Right, I've got to make two blokes changing a light funny, <laughs> right, and then as wow. soon as as soon as you start doing that, it just, you know, and then within that, that would spark off ideas, and and I started doing that 
playing around. So really, by the time I was, you know, by the time I moved to London and started yeah, doing yeah. gigs, the idea of going, this is my act, was, it wasn't really an act, it was just me just dicking about, really. So, <laughs> and then- Describe your act. That, that is it, <laughs> is it dicking literally about? dicking about. Um, and the same, and then when I started doing, doing the longer shows, I kind of thought, oh, you've got to have a show and structure it. And actually, nine times out of ten, nobody knows when you're doing a bit of material or just right. improvising. So I didn't really... So I went, well, I won't worry about that. I'll just do what... As long as people are laughing, it doesn't matter, really. So, so that's how it, it slowly evolved. The yeah. first time I saw you was... Uh, I think I've talked about this night before, at Leighton Live in Edinburgh. Yeah. And just explain what Leighton Live is. Um, it's sort of a fight where a bit of comedy breaks out <laughs> now and again. You're right. I've seen a... people be... I saw Daniel Kitson uh, booed off in, I think, less than five seconds. <laughs> yeah. And he was great. Yeah. That was the thing. If they didn't like you, the second that you walked out, if you even showed, like, a tiny little bit right. of... Just, a, just a, a flicker of nerves, they just, they were like sharks, like one drop of blood, <laughs> and they could see them all. And yeah, and sometimes people were already getting booed off before they'd even got to the mic, you know, so it was that sort of... But there was a few of us, like, I used to do it, I used to do it quite a lot, you know, I'd do it sort mm. of four nights a week, and it got to the point where, after a while, they just didn't bother trying... I mean, they'd still shout and, and join in, but they just didn't bother, cos they just went... <laughs> They just knew I didn't care. <laughs> right. Just be throwing stuff and I go, hey. Well, so, I think that the night yeah. I saw you, you found a policeman in the audience. Oh, that's right. And you yeah, got him yeah, up yeah. on stage and interviewed him and then you sent him backstage. Yeah. And then you said, are there any criminals in the that's audience? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got people up who had... Had committed crimes, from yeah. ...ranging from parking fines to... One guy said he'd committed murder. That's right. And, and the weird thing about that room was is that this guy looked like he'd committed murder and everyone went, yeah, yeah, we can... <laughs> That's yeah. right, he's in every night. Yeah, and, and we got the audience to decide the severity of the crimes, put them in a line-up, yep. muddled them up, and then the policeman came back on. And you invented a song on the spot called don't... Rearrange the Criminals. I don't remember that. It was fantastic. Yeah. You had everyone singing Rearrange the Criminals. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. And then the policeman came out and he had to... He had to put, put them, them back into order. In, in order. And he did it. And he did, he did it. it. Yeah. But when I sent the policeman backstage... Right. ..cos there was a band at the end of the night... ..and they're fond of, uh, you know, illegal substances. OK. So, all of a sudden, <laughs> one of the, like, the drummers leaning out... ..and he's like, all right, what's he doing? Oh, he's got a... He's like, he's got criminals. You've got a copper. He's got a copper on the stage. He's sending, he's sending them back. He's sending them back. So the band are all there. <laughs> Down the toilet. Just, yeah. It was like a drugs bust was going on. <laughs> and of course, like, you know, I came off going, how funny was that? And they're all sat there like this. You spoiled our night. <laughs> yeah, it's a great night of comedy. And it's gone. That's the thing. You do these things. And I, I, I know you film. A lot of yeah, yeah, new we stuff. do but now. The, yeah, they yeah. just dis these events just, just gone into they just the, go, yeah, don't they? Yeah, I know. Occasionally, you you'll see a rather snooty journalist um, go along to see your show two nights in a row in an attempt to prove that you're not just making it up. Yeah. as you go along, and they're always thwarted. They always just get a bit confused. Because <laughs> what I do is I sort of you know if I've got a, a story or a or, or an idea, I kind of go into it, and then. Or I'll improvise something and I'll think, oh, I'll do that again tomorrow night. So the journalist will come back the next night and then something which was 100% improvised the night before, I'll kind of go back, I'll go, on the, it. the idea of that, so I'll take it. But it'll go off in a completely different way. So it's only really the, you know, there might only be 30 seconds or a minute of that thing from, so, but it's still, it's not, it's not improvised and it's not, Material. It's just no. it's just an idea that I go. Oh, I'll play with that again, and then so they sat there, kind of going, oh, but that there was thirty seconds of it. That he did that last night, but it but it comes in and goes out in a different way. So it's because it's constantly, but they they can't. It annoys them that there's no lines. It's all just <laughs> yeah. But I quite like that. The other thing about that is no one can really steal your material. Can they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if you have an idea, like, let's say, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, chemist shop routine... Yeah, yeah, It's based on the observation 
yeah. that the chemist works a foot and a half above yeah, everybody yeah, else. Yeah. And that's a stealable idea. Yeah. But your um, never put a blanket over an owl <laughs> routine yeah. is based on the idea that an owl is just one thing. Mm. It doesn't have any shoulders. It doesn't have a neck. It's just one... It's just one... Unit. Yeah. So there's... there's When you're tucking in an owl, there's no... You don't know when you've done it. <laughs> you sort of, like, go to tuck... And there was a... The, uh, and obviously the confusion of, of owls being nocturnal. You get them ready for bed, <laughs> and they're like, but I've got to go out. So that's all confusing. So you don't know when to tuck them in, and then when you're trying to tuck them in, you sort of get to there, and uh, I've the... The, the the bit that people always say, can you say that to me, is when you pull this up here and the owl goes, it's not high enough, it doesn't even cover me owl boobs. <laughs> and owls don't even have boobs, so that doesn't make sense. For a start, if journalists wanted to pick it apart, and then you go, is that is that where the neck is? And then if you go too much, you suffocate the owl. No. And you need an owl neck detection device. <laughs> Just, just a stick with an arrow on it. So yeah, it's, but that's just like a daft idea that then sort of spirals off. But no one. Yeah, there's not. It's a huge not going to be stolen. Of Bill Oddy might have it now. He's <laughs> into his ornithology. <laughs> I bet he's down at the local bird watching clubs. Going well, of course. The thing about owls is. The, uh, <laughs> have you ever heard so... of anyone doing one of your bits? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, they've they've been uh, they've been nicked, but in a but usually the sort of stuff that. You know, steers towards the the more normal, right? And I just think, well, good luck to you. <laughs> good luck <laughs> making that work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so, what of all of these stunts? Makes, it, it makes no like it's one of those things. Where that's the problem with explaining my act. It no. is just me talking bollocks. Yeah. And when you explain it like that, I'm talking now like it, this is inside the actor's studio. Good. <laughs> well, yes, of course. <laughs> When I went through my falling owl period, I um... <laughs> but you know, did, did, did you hear about the uh, my Twitter bombard thing that happened? Yeah, but I was inspired by you to to do something like that myself. I told everyone for a one twenty four hour period to change their picture on Twitter yeah. to a picture of uh, Blakey from on the buses. Brilliant. I Brilliant. called it the twenty four hour Blake out, <laughs> and it spread. That's what that's what Twitter's for, though, is to do that sort of. Uh, the Twitter bombard thing, I knew that had gone too... F what it was was basically I got all of my followers, we'd pick one, we'd pick, like, one p Twitter account. Mm. Started with Doritos. Cos why do Doritos... Why do they have a... You know... <laughs> what are they alerting you to? Every hour on the hour, still spicy. <laughs> um, so there was... We did Doritos, and that was quite good, cos we had, like... Uh, um, everyone just sent them questions, but you... They didn't put my at in there. So, right. so all of these questions came from just random people just deciding to... So, so Doritos, or the, or the person that's getting the thing, just opens and, th and all of a sudden, they've just got thousands of bizarre questions. And people were sending things like, uh, uh, Dear Doritos, I'd like to use one of your snacks as a plectrum for a spaghetti guitar. <laughs> Uh, I opened a packet of Doritos recently to find one was broken. What is your returns <laughs> policy? So they're getting all of this sort of stuff. And then, uh, and then we did... Uh, the, the, the government elected a, a, a Twitter czar, like a social media czar. So we bombarded this woman, this MP, with all these questions. But what's it? Uh, uh, what was it? Um, King Kong. Do you think that the government should apologise for what happened to King Kong? And this woman, she was really good. She got it. So she's sending things back like, uh, um, I, uh, whereas I feel that uh, this is more of a matter for uh, the American government, as it <laughs> happened in their, you know, on their soil. But I will bring it up with the uh, foreign secretary. <laughs> right. and she, so she starts responding, and then we did. Uh, we did the British National Party. You know, the BMP, the, the yep. ultra right wing. Yep. Uh, and we we sent one to them, and uh, but thousands and thousands of... of and I, I sent one through saying, uh, Dear BMP, I've recently had a Chinese meal, and now a mainly Chinese. Uh, would you like me to leave the country until I have had a massive poo? <laughs> <laughs> and people were going, I've been on a sunbed. 
Um, when is it safe for me to leave the house? When am I accepted back into society? <laughs> so, so, and it was just all this. And, uh, and it ended up becoming uh, five uh, newspapers uh, picked up on the, on the MP one. And then all of a sudden, and I knew it sort of got a bit out of control when I opened up a broadsheet newspaper and there's an article like that about, you know, this Twitter thing. Well, that's wow. a, it's do a you, bit tricky. Do you ever feel like some sort of cult leader? <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I stopped it in the end. And so where's all this leading? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Where can you take what, it? What, this show? <laughs> where's this going? Where can you take it next? Well, <laughs> what's left? <laughs> There's only so much bollocks you can talk. <laughs> um, I think what's slowly happened is, is obviously, you know, getting popular here and then going over to Australia. And uh, for me, I think it, it just developed. I mean, I try and just sort of... Um, I mean, I know some people have got that thing of they want to do, you know, more and more tickets and, you know, the, it becomes l less about the comedy and more about the... But you've done... You didn't know, you do a show where you were linked up to 30 cinemas or something by satellite? Yeah, yeah, it was more than that. It was 45, 50 cinemas. Pardon me. Yeah. yeah. So it's every, yeah. every view cinema in Britain. Yeah. You can't go more than that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's weird. I don't know how much you've talked to people over here, like... Cos I did the arena tour in Australia, yep. which was, you know... Yeah, was in huge. That, ..in the round thing with, you know, those massive, great big, you know, people all around and proper... Bon Jovi style comedy, so I've had a go at that, and that was great. But in terms of the global thing, I'm gonna gonna go to America, and and I'd like to be able to, you know, I'd like to be able to to gig the way I do in Australia and here. I'd like to do that, I'd, it... but I'd like to get the whole of America. I don't just want to do New York or LA. When I can play big auditoriums like in the Deep South, that's what I'll, I want to be able to do all the. You know, and all those, like, weird places that you only ever see on, you know, documentaries. <laughs> I'd like... That's what I'd like. And, and, and then just be great, wouldn't it? Just... And the whole world, you know, sort of, yeah. Well, obviously, people... So not, not much, just global domination. Just global <laughs> domination. Know? So... Uh, obviously, yeah. people want to see you back in Australia. And I uh, will be back. I promise I'll be back. Uh, is there anything people can send to try and restore <laughs> your collection <laughs> of comedy artefacts. I've, I've sort of... You know what I learned from the whole... which the, From the whole fire business? I learned that your possessions mm. are actually... And don't believe... when you, These people... You know what people say to me all the time? People just go, oh, it must have been, you know, this sort of uh, uh, rejuvenating thing yeah, right, if you're right. just, you know, having no possession. Bullshit. <laughs> Anyone that talks like that is an idiot and Buddhists are wrong. <laughs> Let me just say that now, right? Uh, but what, I, what it did make me realise was that your, your stuff, you know, your, mm. you know, your comedy star, and you're going to hate me for saying this, cos <laughs> I know you're the worst of anyone when it comes I to am. this. You, you, uh, sometimes your possessions, you, you become a curator yeah. of a collection that nobody cares about but you. I know. And that's, that's what it made me realise. I genuinely thought, when I was putting all this stuff together, I loved being able to, you know, like, you know, people come round and you go, oh, listen to this and listen yeah. to that, and then... And you sort of think, future generations. You think, no, actually, future generations will see this stuff and go tear that down the op shop. <laughs> that's right. I'm the <laughs> only know. person who cares about Frankie Howard singing... What was that one you had? Up je t'aime. Up je t'aime. How did that I mean, go again? It was... You, you remember the, the, the classic je t'aime? Yep. Ah, je t'aime. And it was like, oh, it was racy for the time. Sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, je t'aime. Super sexy. Well, up je t'aime was Frankie Howard's character from Up Pompeii. <laughs> and it was June Whitfield and it was... Ah, je t'aime. Frankie Howard going, oh, give over. Oh, stop it, love. Oh, je t'aime. Oh, no. Oh, my back. I've got to play golf in the morning. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, come on. Give over. Give over. Oh, you shall do me in. <laughs> oh, je t'aime. Oh, you can't help yourself. So you're saying you've learned to live your life without that? Without. You've let go. But what I... Yes. But at the same time, it's not long, not long before technology gets to the point where everything mm. is going to be online with an instant click. 
mm. and people like you and I who have devoted our lives to mm. collecting this stuff together, some kid in his bedroom is going to go, I fancy, up your tem, click, boom, yeah. and it's, yeah, everything's going to be... It'll get to the point... In fact, it'll get to the point where there'll be a chip in your brain and you've just got to think of up your tem and it'll be... It'll be there, yeah. so... And we'll be yeah. sad relics. That's when <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna... Yeah. I'm just gonna get on the penny farthing <laughs> yeah. bicycle and ride off in a half. Yeah, singing Frankie Howard songs. <laughs> Ross, great to talk to Always you again. Always a pleasure. And, and uh, I'll see you very soon back in Australia, I promise. Cheers.